Welcome back to a new video here in Swab. In this video, we are going to be covering the a little bit more advanced way of creating a macro. Well, I do have another video, which is the basics. So I'm actually going to link that here. If you want to check that out first, if you have no idea, but this one is so that you understand how to edit a few more things in the inspector, because by default, when you create a macro, it does look a little bit odd and that is not as user friendly as you would want it to be and it just takes a few more minutes and well it can be a little bit complicated the first time i've actually spent hours and hours trying to figure it out but i found a few channels that had some videos they were a bit technical and they were a bit long i can't remember the exact names or not but i'm gonna try to find them again and link them down in the description so that if you want to check the longer versions and more details of those videos you can check those out too okay i've talked already for too long in this video so let's just get started. Okay, so here we have this fusion composition, which I made for this tutorial. Those other things are the actual titles of the MB titles pack, mega bundle titles pack. This is a really simple title that I just made. Now, in this case, we're going to have the actual text here that we can change this up and the shading for the red part. And then we have the transform node because I want to add a positioning option just because so that we add a little bit of an extra option so that I can show you the inspector drop down menu, which is sort of like the main thing that we're covering in this tutorial. Now, before you do anything else, what we need to do is create a label. What is a label? Well, a label is basically this thing is the transform is basically we're replicating these because by default, let me just show you an example right here. If we save a macro here, I have all the macros saved that I still have to change and do this process too. Now, if we just bring that here, you'll see it like that. And by default, it's not that great to see it like that. So um, that's why we're doing this. Now, here what we need to do is create a label. So for that, we're just going to use this transform node. You can also do it in the in the text node. So we're just going to use the transform for now. We're going to right click on the transform and where it says edit controls. We're going to go here and we're going to create a new control, which is going to be called label. Now leave the type as default and the ID as a new control. So it creates a new one. We're going to take the animatable off and we're going to set it up here in the controls page because we wanted to show up here in the inspector when we import it into the edit page as a normal macro. Now here by default, it can be the range from zero to one. What this means is that zero and one is when it's going to be activated. So this is basically one when it's open and zero, it will be closed. And by default, we want it to be closed. So it's going to be zero. And then the input control, it should be a label control. We can show the arrow, which is these and the hide next and nest label is basically how many values are going to be inside each. For now, by default, we can just put five and five. We can edit that in visual code viewer that we're going to use in a later step. We're going to press OK and now we're ready. Now we're going to select the transform holding control. We're going to select the text next and then we're going to hold shift and select everything here. We can right click and we're going to go and create our macro. In this case, we're going to just name these tutorial macro. And here where it says transform, we can add the position, which is what we want. And here what we can do is also add and change name, change the name of the option if you wish to do so. You can also add more things. In this case, we're just going to do one and add the position, which is the center. Now we're going to close that and then do the same for the text. And in this case, we want to add these things here. So for that, we're going to select all of these up to tracking. If you want a title that has a lot more lines, like if you press enter and you write more stuff, then you can add the line spacing too. Or you can add as many options as you want. I usually would just do all of these until the tracking plays. Now here, the next thing that we need to do is close the text, close the layout, and then close the transform. And we're going to go to shading, which is that red part of our shape here, which is basically a shape that adjusts to the title's length. Now, in this case, we can go and find the type two, since if we go to shading, it's the element two. So that's what we're going to use the color of the two. So instead of using type, which that will give you all the options of gradient and all that stuff to keep it simple, we're just going to use the four main colors here, which is red two, green two, blue two and alpha two. 
which is basically just these little things right here. After that, we can also we can go back up if you want, or you can just scroll down. In this case, I did go up and close it. The last thing for this one is to add a common, go to common and then add the motion blur option because sometimes you want to add motion blur, sometimes you want to take it out. So having those options is always helpful. Now we can close this and save it. And in this case, I want to save it in a specific folder that I have here so I can find it more easily. One, when you save a macro here, it will usually some it will usually close back these because it sort of refreshes so that it will show up here. So let's see if we can actually find that macro right here. Okay, I know there was a weird issue when I selected something else and it changed the name. So we're gonna fix that. It's actually this one. So it's gonna be tutorial macro there. Uh I got lost for a second because I couldn't find it, and it turns out it changed its name for some reason. If we drag this here, we can see that that's the same title that we have here. And we can also see this here. Now we have this open right here. And in order to add the different things that we need to add, we have to go to the visual code editor. And I already have one instance of it open with another title that has the values that we're going to use. But let me just show you at the beginning how it's going to look. Now, this does look a little bit, well, not a little bit. It does look scary. The first time I saw it, I was like, oh, there's no way I can figure this out. So I spent a ton of hours trying to learn how to work around this thing. Now, if we press Control F and search for label, we're going to find here the label that we just created in the transform node right here. And in order to uh, add what we need to do uh, to have that viewer here, is we need to copy these and I am actually going to name it label one because it's going to be easier to find things. Now, if we go into this one and if we search for label, we're going to see that there is a bunch of them put in place already. And here we have that same view that we had here in the last part. Now, what we have to do, which is not which which does not happen by default is add these label input or instance input. And for that, we can actually just go and copy this this thing by holding shift and selecting all of these and pressing control C. Now, don't worry, I'm going to put this text in the description for this. The longer one, you don't need it. Once you do that step in the transform section, it will show up automatically. Now here we can go to the tutorials and go all the way up and you will see here it says transform one because that's the first thing that we created with our macro. And then here's this text one already. Now what we want to do is we can press we can press enter actually, and then paste that there. Now the source OP is usually where you created that label. And since we use the transform to create the label, we're going to add transform one in this case there. And then the source, these two things need to be the same. And it's going to be basically named after this label that we have down here. If you name these something different, then you will just have to name these thing here, the same thing. So it works. Otherwise it's not going to work. Now it's actually easy. You can just use label because that makes it easier to see and understand. Now, the next thing we can do is actually select all of these here because we're going to have three different options in this case or two. And we're going to press enter here and we're going to copy that. And then we're going to change here the name to label two. Now for this first one, remember we put five on the input. In this case, we only want one because it's the position for the transform node. So if we change and add that to one, if we save these, we can try and bring these on screen and it's not working. And this is one of the issues that I mentioned. Something is missing. Now, since I'm used to already doing this a few times, I noticed that there was not a comma here. So I think that would be the way to fix this. So adding the comma after this label here, and I'm going to save these again and I'm going to try to bring this on screen. There it goes. I said a coma can break everything now. OK, we have that and we see the label here already working with the position. Now I, you see its name label here. You can actually name these to whatever you want. So it would be it would be position in this case. There it goes. And after we save that and erase this one and bring this one on screen, it will be named position. Great, right? 
Now, the next thing is to add that second label. So for that, we're actually just going to go and copy these. Find where the text one ends or where it ends, where the option ends, which is going to be the motion blur option. So for that, we can see the size here. We can see the character spacing. There is. Oh, in this case, we do have that shape. I almost forgot about that. So for that, we have the red to was at first shape. So for that, we're going to have to to put the, another input here and also another input here after where the text will start. Because by default, we have these these different things here that are changing the color. If I press two here on screen, you will see it change the color. OK, we have this one and that was going to be label number two source label number two again. And we don't have to change the source of the transform here because it's using that same one that we had previously created. If we bring this on screen, we can see the label has been already created and it's using the tutorial title and it's only adding five things. We actually want a few more things. So to know how many you need to know how many you have to edit where we changed that five earlier, all that we have to do is go here until the point where we found it that it changed, which is here at 10. So from two to 10, that's nine. It doesn't look like it, but if you count two, it's nine. And here we're going to create that second label now. Oh, but before that, we're going to go here to the second label and we're going to add the input numbers to nine. Both of them. And since we're here already, we're going to create the, the last two labels that we already need for that. We're just going to copy and paste that twice and then we can name things here. It's going to be the label three and this is going to be the label four. Now here, this label three, it's going to be named uh, shape color because it's that square or rectangle shape. Then for this one, it's going to be named motion blur. And for the last one, it's going to be called just text. Now, if we save these already, we can go back and add a new one. Get rid of the last one. And we can see the change of text already happened. And you see, I we changed that to nine. And now it's adding all of the options up until tracking here. Now, the next thing is to add the shape here. And for that, we're going to go to where it has the third one, which is label number three here. Source label number three. And we can paste this here. And now we have to check how many options we have. So in this case is, I think it's four options. But to be sure, we can go here and check until we have the motion blur starting. So it's input 15. So from input 11 to 14. So one, two, three and four. So we have to go here and change from nine to four for the label three. And for the last one, motion blur is always five because you have the activation of motion blur and then you have four different sliders that you can change there. Since already created, I already updated that last one, so we don't have to go back and do that again. Now, the last thing is to copy this label one more time and put it right here at where the motion blur starts and change the label to label four. There it goes. And then I think we are pretty much done in this case. We can save these and bring this tutorial macro here. And voila, we have the position that we can change. If we press number two, then we can change the position here. Add the text here, add whatever text you want. This tutorial, this title actually just adapts to the text that we have here. So it will follow the shape of it. You can change the font if you want, but sometimes if you add a really weird font, it might get it might offset this the shape that it's automatically following the text. So you all have you always have to be careful with that uh, so that it doesn't break when you try to like. So it doesn't look that bad when you try to do that, you know, like here there's a little bit of like too much space, I think, in between. So sometimes that happens because of the font of how the font was designed and where the midpoint of the font was designed. And that can make things look weird sometimes. So, so sometimes title with these type of things that are linked with shape don't work that great. 
but there's always the alternative of using shapes and then having the shape the option to adapt it and transform it so that it fits. It just takes a few more steps to make it look good, but it's it's doable, it's workable. And then the last one is the motion blur. We activate it here and we have the options that we can play with. So now if you follow all these steps, you can have a pretty great looking macro that's organized. Well, I hope this video was helpful. I was working on creating the macros for the bundle that I'm working on. If you want to check those macros, they are featured in this post. I'm going to put it here or I'm going to just put them on screen right here and you can check all of them. I think the first version, I'm going to just drop 30 of them. The whole idea and objective is to have 100 of them. But I'm thinking maybe dropping or launching the product right now. And then as it goes, I maybe add 5 to 10 every week until we reach 100 and every week the price will go up so the launch price is going to be higher the next time when something is updated but you won't have to buy extra things after you buy it the first time now that is pretty much it for this video i hope that you enjoyed it and i hope it was helpful if you want to check that pack if the website is not ready yet there's not going to be a link in the description if the landing page for that product launch is ready Make sure to check the description and you will find the link there if you want to check that out. And yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. And I hope to see you in the next video here in Swabi. Bye.